Yeah, it's interesting. You can see it's tracks in there that a hog hog actually came and rolled that this log out of the way because it obviously had grubs and stuff in here. There's a track right there. Hog tracks. So it actually moved the log so it could root up under and get the, the grubs and stuff and the larva that were in it. That's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. and then, <clears throat> so me and my oldest boy, Donnie, we're going to get out and do a little bit of adventuring today. And uh, it's not, uh, not bow season of any kind that we can hunt right now. So we're going to wander around and just kind of explore a little bit. And I think we're going to maybe look for some arrow shafts. Might get lucky and find a shaft for an atlatl. And uh, I think we're going to get some stuff to work on some fire making stuff as well. It's getting to that point that uh, Donnie's getting old enough that he should really have a good handle and be able to master uh, bow drill friction fire at this point. And I would really like to be able to do it off the landscape. So we come out here, show them how to collect the materials, natural materials, and then create the set from that rather than using paracord and that kind of stuff if we if we train him harder than he needs to at this point then he'll be prepared if he needs to make cordage as opposed if he doesn't have any so i think that's what we're going to do we're going to find some yucca most likely and see if we can't uh, even find a yucca stock would be wonderful but we might have to put on a little bit of of miles to to find exactly what we need but maybe not we'll see what do you think you excited about it <clears throat> donnie's finally starting to show an interest in wanting to to do a lot of this stuff so every time i can get him out and we can get involved in doing something that's all the better look at all the fresh hog root there's probably hogs right around here right now makes me wish you could be in here with a bow this time of year you're not allowed to hunt in here this time of year for hogs but now would be the time because they sure come in there's a lot of hog rooting in here so we got a, a yucca over here i think this one i've already i've already taken leaves off of it once before there you go so i think we'll if we need to come back to this one we can but i'd rather let it just kind of regenerate and uh get some new ones sprouting up we'll hunt around and see if we can find another one there's there's lots of them just kind of around here that one's looking kind of bare still so we'll uh we'll keep looking around oh there's another one over here i don't think i ever i don't think i ever cut any from that one it looks pretty good a little bit taller anyway it's not super bushy but there's definitely some good leaves and we don't need a ton off of that so one thing you'll notice is the tips on these are really really sharp yep and they'll they'll poke you pretty good they won't like really hurt you but they'll get you they'll jab you so we got a stone knife so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down Close, close to stock. You don't want to cut it up here because that's where all your good fibers are. So come down here. You don't have to go all the way to the base either because it's kind of woody down towards the towards the base. But just kind of, you see where it starts to thin yes. out just a little bit below that and just saw through, just like that. See? Oh, okay. Doesn't take much to cut with a good sharp knife, but you don't whack with it. You just give it a saw. So go ahead, and then when you grab it too, pull it tight. <laughs> and it's funny, isn't it? There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right, come on over here and get get a couple of those ones. Yeah, it broke. Here, do this one time too. Whenever you go to cut one, pull on it. See how I put tension on it? Yeah. Okay. And if you pull the entire time you cut, you barely have to cut, and it'll slide right off. So you don't just push down, you saw backwards with it. Okay. 
Okay. How many do we need? Uh, we'll get a few more. We'll get maybe 10 or so. Try to get some of these, all these long ones up here. Okay. Up here is fine, yep. I'll hold it. You go ahead and... Perfect. Yeah, I see what you mean about them being sharp. They poked you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Told you. Can you keep that in mind? <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. I'm reading this. Yep, get a couple more. Right as I say that. Mm -hmm. Try... <clears throat> I think what you're doing, so we try it. this, hold on, you don't have to use a lot of muscle. See how I'm, I'm not like this either, I'm kind of straight oh. across it, and then I'm going to pull back, and I'm just going to, and I'm lightly sawing, I'm not putting, I'm not pushing, I'm just sawing, okay. very lightly. Let the, let the tool do the work. So pull, come up a little bit higher so you're not down into the woody stuff. You're fine. Got it. See, you got it. You'll get good. It's all just technique. It's a good one right there. You can cut that one up here. This one? This one? Mm -hmm. There you go. Now you're getting it. Does it have yeah. like a gel inside? A gel? Yeah. No. Not really. Just cellulose or whatever you call that stuff. Oh, I just poked myself. We'll get, a, we'll get a few more of these. Make sure we've got enough. Okay. okay. One more here. Let me get this. Oops. I, uh, I'll get a couple real quick. Let's get that one. And that one. And then a couple of long ones here. And the best thing we can do, so we don't want to, <clears throat> we don't want to take all of them off the plant. We're going to let that, uh, regenerate if we knock all the leaves off of it we, we, we could kill it yep so and we want to be able to come back and get more from this later so off we'll, what we'll do is we'll continue on and see if we can't find another one and we'll get about that many again and then we should have plenty i want to make sure that we have enough cordage for both you and i to to make some cord sound good Yeah, turkey just gobbled over there. I'll call to it and see if we can hear it. I know, it won't gobble again. Such as a Florida turkey. I do that crap all the time. <clears throat> See, the thing is about these Osceola turkeys, you get down here, you hear one gobble. As soon as you call to it, it'll shut up. It won't make another dang sound, but if you'd sit here and continue to hunt, there's a very good chance it would never make a sound, but it would sure wander its way on over here. Typically, if you find an Osceola and it's just gobbling and gobbling and gobbling and gobbling, you're probably not gonna kill it because it's covered up with hens. <laughs> but uh you know an eastern or something else it'll gobble the whole way coming in i'm not saying an osceola won't but they just don't gobble nearly as much as the as easterns and certainly not as much as the the merriam's turkeys the ones in montana which you wouldn't remember because you were just a baby but those things will gobble their face right off <laughs> mm-hmm all right well we'll keep looking around these uh do you know what kind of trees these are buddy Mm -hmm. I bet you don't know. I feel like we have these at the house, but... Nope, we don't have these. Birch? <laughs> no, we don't have birch down here oh. at all. Those are persimmons. <clears throat> so, there's a whole tree big tree. field of persimmon trees here. and I don't think these ones are going to be big enough to fruit, but there's some way on down by the pond that... Uh, fruit? Yep, they, they will have fruit on them, but not this time of year. They'll They'll get fruit and start being edible about September. 
I would like to go back in September and see if we can get some of them. Yeah, maybe we'll have to make a trip back in here to look for plums and uh, plums and persimmons, huh? They grow them. Wait, they grow plums? There's there's plum trees in here too. They're not they're not as good as the store plums. They're like little little plums, about the size of like an acorn. A little bit bigger than that. Here's a, a yucca right here. So this one has got more um, more big leaves at the bottom. So this time I'll cut and then I'll just hand them to you. How about that? Deer, deer. I see a deer. Oh yeah. Yep, there's a deer. Well, it's off pretty far through the... Whoop, you can see him running. I don't know if y'all can. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a girl. Yep. I think it's they were down in there pretty far. Folks on the camera probably couldn't see him. Really? Yep, good eyes seeing the deer. Very good. And... That should be enough, but if we see another yucca that's got some good long ones, we'll, we'll get a few extra just to be, just to be sure. I was hoping that we'd wander around and find a, a yucca stalk to use as a spindle. And we still may, but uh, I don't know, don't know what we're going to get into. I'm not seeing the, uh, <clears throat> not quite seeing what I want to, the size of either dog fennel or spindle, or um, yucca for spindles. So if we really have to, we'll have to find something else to use. <laughs> right in front of us. That's got some good long ones on it there. And what's interesting is why this, why it grows so much yucca is, see that goes down into a swamp, and this is what we would call a sand dune. So underneath us, this is all sand, and it's just a lot drier climate, which the yuccas really like so whenever you're in the wild and you're looking for yucca you're not going to find it down in the swamps you have to look for the high ground where you're going to find a lot of more open pine trees uh, a little bit drier of a location in fact there's another yucca way on down over there i can see too so there's there's quite a few of them around here this is a good spot for, for them. i've gotten lots of bowstring material here in the past and net cordage and everything else. Yeah, yep, it, it grows all the new ones more so out of the top. You know, in a, in, a, in a plant needs a certain amount of leaves to be able to kind of feed itself, you know, with sunlight yeah. and whatnot. And um, so germ, that's that's why we don't... Is it, is it germination? No, that's when the seed pops up. Um, I don't remember what... Photosynthesis. Yeah. So the um so we don't want to that's why we don't want to take every leaf off of it we want to give it an opportunity to continue to feed itself well i'll show you a nice easy trick too yeah so take your bundle take one of your leaves oh. yeah. so it's just one giant yeah it's like one giant leaf yep so there now, now you don't have to worry about dropping them. Works out handy, doesn't it? Well, unless if I drop the whole thing. Yeah. I think you'll know it if you do that. Well, here's a big question. Yeah. Okay, stop a second. Which direction is the truck? Good job. Very good. <laughs> I expected you to be like, I have no clue. <laughs> Very good. So here's dog fennel here. I remember because we came down like this way. Mm-hmm. And circled and around. Off over here and then came here. Mm -hmm. But this is dog fennel here. But again, it's all really small. I have seen these at the house. I'm pretty sure Eric's not at school. Yeah, you probably definitely have seen them around school. They grow in about every ditch you could imagine. Ditch or open little field somewhere. So we're getting closer. That one's still a little bit too small. If we absolutely had to, to use that, we might might be able to, but that's a small one. That's a small one? Yeah, yeah. The thicker your spindle, the easier it's going to be to make fire. And I know we can do better than that one. And I see some taller dog fennel right here. So let's see if there's 
anything that's got any size to it or if it's just tall and thin. Yeah. Still pretty small. What we'll do is we'll we'll snap one off and if we absolutely have to. If we absolutely have to, we can try that, but that is that's a pretty small one. I think we'll be able to make it happen with that. But you're going to have an easier time with this if we get a get one that's a little bit thicker. But so that's what we'll do is see once you find one that you think you might be able to work with I don't want to put the energy into this because it'll it takes time and, it, and it'll tire you out working it too But we're gonna snap one off that if we have to use it we can use it, but we're gonna keep looking because we still have to um, Still have to find a hearth board as well So we need to come up with something for that so while we're looking for that, we can still look for another spindle piece. But this one's a little little bit thin for what I really want. There's a uh, turtle. Yep, gopher turtle hole. A gopher turtle. Gopher tortoise. Tortoise, I suppose, not a turtle. Like yep. They call that gopher apple or or uh, ground apple. So these will right here, these will turn into a little about that big and they call them go for apples or something like that I've never eaten one although they say that you can um, we had a lot of them around the house when I was a kid but I've never eaten one I should research that a little bit more and when they do come out I should see what they're all about I figured if they tasted really good I'd probably know about them by now but you never know Like and uh, what is it? March, May. In There's May. Like a bunch of them would be blossoming. Well, no, most of our most of our fruits, um, they'll start in June. So like blackberries, we might might be able to find a spot that's got some blackberries that are that are starting right now. Um, Southern Florida, their blackberries are already up. But here, it's going to take a little bit. Uh, a little bit more time and then stuff like oh there's a hog there is there was a hog yep that was a nice size boar too huh and that's something just hauling butt i didn't even see it <laughs> until you till you called it out yeah i just heard he was probably out here rooting around and heard us being noisy Luckily man i wish we could get in here and hunt really wish we could hog hunt in here right now all right, here's one that's a little bit bigger than the one we've got, so we'll we'll snap it off too. That's a little bit bigger. It's not very big, but it's just a tad bit bigger, so that's a little bit better. We'll keep walking. <clears throat> so yeah, you've seen seen deer and hogs this morning. That was a nice boar too. That was probably a 150 pound boar. Now, was that? Oh, we were talking about the fruit. Yes. That yeah. So like the plums, persimmons, um, you know, any of your larger fruits that we have, they're going to be around here. They're going to come right more around September, and then sparkleberries too are going to be just loaded on the trees, and then they stay on the trees for a long time. So they're not. Whoa! They're not ready right now. I stepped in an old old turtle hole that collapsed in on me. Well, here's one I think that's maybe a little bit bigger yet. Look at that. So let's snap that off at the bottom. That's a good one. That one might be a, a good one for a hand drill, even. That's a really nice spindle there. It's a little little bit small still, but we can definitely get a fire from this one. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice one overall. I like that one. And I think that is our biggest one thus far. Notice we don't have to use the stone knife to cut those because they're dead, right? So they just snap off their sticks. But uh, whenever we're ready to cut them into shape, we'll be able to saw them with the stone knife. Okay. Make sense to you? And you know why we can't use green plants for it, right? Yes, because they won't burn well since they're still alive. Yep, we need that dry, 
friction with no moisture. Okay, if there's any moisture in the wood, we're not gonna get uh, we're not gonna get a coal out of it. Oh well, here here's exactly where we're gonna find. Here's a big old cabbage palm. This is exactly where we're gonna find. Find what? Here, you hold those. This is where we're gonna find the hearth board. That's gonna be our hearth board right there, our fire board. So we got this one, and then let's get an, another one that's even a little bit older, just in case. So now we've got we've got two options. So we got this whole place is just a a great fire location, isn't it? Got everything we need now to make fire, don't we? That was handy. So Florida is a wonderful place for that because always remember there's cabbage palms just about everywhere. There's not a ton right around here, but if you got down closer to the swamp, we'd find them. But that's what we want for fireboards. And then dog fennel, it's great spindle, or the yucca stalks. And then we've got yucca for cordage. Now what we need is we need a stick to make a bow out of for the bow drill set. That's easy. We can use just about any stick for that. So I'll wander along and see if I can just find one that looks decent. We want one that actually already has a little bit of a curve to it would be handy. How we use the stone knife, we're not gonna force through it. We just start sawing nice and gently. And the idea is we don't need to cut all the way through the tree. All we got to do is really score all the way around it a little bit deep and then we can snap it off. A little bit more. Oh, we can just let's, snap it. Let's try it. Yeah. Whoop. See how that worked? Will yeah. it get you in the face? No. <laughs> See how all oh, that's all the more that we had to all the more that we had to uh, score it, and then we could snap it off, and it that's handy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And so then we'll take this piece, this one here. Mm, probably. We're right about here, it would be fine. We'll kind of do the same thing. Look at that, pop it right off. Mm -hmm. That's simple. All right, now what I want you to do is right on that line. Score it all the way around, okay? Okay. You can set it on the ground if you want to, or like, maybe like this. Stick this down against the ground, spin it around so you can work on it. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to do this. Sure you can, just takes time. You got to be patient. You don't press hard, you just saw, nice and soft. It's not going down, up and down, it's a bit. No, that's how you learn. You'll get comfortable using it. There you go. Now you're figuring it out, huh? Just make sure it's scored all the way around. Even if you're if you're struggling even with this back and forth song, if you just put it here and then pull just back to you, see how that cuts? Yeah. So you don't have to saw so much. You can just pull. Okay. Go ahead. I'll help I'll I'll help hold you. There you go. So that'll still cut it. All right, grab it and pull. Yep. 
bend it backwards. Don't try to pull it off. There you go. Now bend it the other way. Back and forth. There you go. Perfect. You did it. Yes. All right. Let's pick up all our stuff. You can leave that here. We don't need that. <clears throat> that little holly tree is getting you, huh? <laughs> little American holly. That's a pokey looking thing. All right. Here, I'll take the stone knife and I'll put it in the sheath. I'll pick up all the... Uh... You pick up all the stuff. And we've got what we need. All right, now, technically... <clears throat> we're not supposed to make a fire in here especially this time of year because it's super dry so they've got a high fire alert so what we'll do is as much as I'd like to just say we'll do it completely right here on the landscape we'll take this stuff home and we'll work on it there just because we want to do the responsible thing I already know that I'm not going to make a fire and it's going to get out of control and burn the place down but if we got caught in here making a fire right now we would be, uh, <clears throat> we'd be in some hot water. <laughs> so. I can break through everything but that stop. Yeah, and then look at that, we've walked right out on the road. Just perfect. What is that? Huh? Oh, well, coon prints or no. possum? No, better than that. You don't know what those are? That's bobcat tracks. Bobcat? Mm -hmm. Oh. Cool. Oh, That's a pretty decent sized cat, too. Awesome. I didn't know bobcats were in here. Oh, yeah. Yep, I've seen several bobcats in here before. Yeah, there's I bobcats and foxes and coyotes. and There's the occasional bear that can come through, but this place doesn't hold much for bears. And look at this. So this is arrowwood viburnum right here. So this would be perfect to make an arrow from yep that's arrowwood viburnum nice and straight see it now it's got like a little knot thing going on right there but for the most part there's enough here that would make a good arrow so we'll right here at this funky knot we'll cut it right on that same deal score it all the way around and then pop it right off just like that So we'll come up here and we'll pop that off. And now there's an extra free little arrow shaft along the way too. Always keep your eyes open when you're hunting around doing anything. If you see an arrow shaft, that's a good time to get an arrow shaft, right? So instead of just saying, oh, I'm going to go out and hunt arrow shafts today, which you can do, the best thing to do is walk along, and if you see one, you get it. And then you're slowly accumulating arrow shafts over a period of time. Just like, uh, like I said, when we're looking for fire stuff, like if you're in a survival situation, if you're trying to get somewhere, what you don't want to do is just start walking circles and looking for fire stuff. Try to get where you got to get, and then find find uh, materials along the way okay. here right there is a nice stand oh i've seen these yep yopon holly yeah, been cutting these. so let's get some of this for no that's not the sparkleberry it looks kind of similar but this is totally different so this is yopon holly and there's quite a bit of it here and that uh has natural caffeine in it it's the only thing in America that's got, I guess, natural caffeine. Oh, yeah, we're going to make tea out of it. Yep, so you make kind of like a coffee or a tea out of it. And that's what uh, the Native Americans used. Also, they really roasted it, and you used a lot of it, and they called it a uh, black drink. So, anyway, what we'll do is we're going to take a couple of these, just like that. We'll just pinch them off. You hold that one. We'll take that one, and we'll take one more. Oops. Oh yeah, the inside does. It's sharp. So we're, gonna, we're just going to pop the tops off a couple of those. And then we'll be able to go home and we'll be able to take the leaves off of them. And we can actually roast them. You can roast them in the oven. Or what we can do is we can actually lay them down inside of a clay pot. And just like roast them. If you set the clay pot on the fire, just put there, 
put the put these in the leaves in the pot and with no water or anything but they'll kind of roast but they won't burn and then we'll be able oh, to so mash them up and make a tea out of it so these are a type of plant um leaf that can burn like well they're green but yeah i mean they can burn but if you if we put them inside of a clay pot we don't see we don't want them to burn we just want them to roast Got the other Ford truck. I know a lot of folks have seen my, seen my Ford diesel, but uh, this might be a work in progress. Donnie really likes this one. I've had this truck a long time. He likes this one. He seems to think that maybe someday this needs to be fixed up and it needs to be his. That remains to be seen. We'll see. <laughs> I sure like it though. All right, that was a fun little adventure this morning, right? Yeah, it's a lot better than going to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Yeah, you were going to go do that today, and we had the, the opportunity to go adventure around and do this. So you'd rather be in the woods than, than at, play at, a game, huh? Yeah, at a table with, hmm. a, bunch of with a bunch of people out here. Got to spend some time with your dad this morning. We got up early and yeah. came out. Yeah, I think that was a good time. It wasn't too long. We got to see hogs, or a hog, and a couple deer. And uh, found some yopon and got stuff to make fire. Got a couple arrow shafts. Good. Yeah. All right. So said what we'll do is we'll go home and we'll we'll work that fire stuff out. You know, another important fact that we should talk about too is, you know, right now it's morning time and we just collected those materials and the dew is set in and everything is still wet yeah. and. We could probably force it into a fire, however... We could let it soak in the sun and have it all. Exactly, yep, let it... So what best thing we can do is process some of these materials out and then set them in the sun, just like you said. Keep it off the ground, set it on like a rock or, or uh, in the sand or something that's kind of hot and dry. And we'll let the sun suck a lot of the moisture, the morning dew, out of that spindle and that hearth board and while we're doing while that's just drying out we can work on making that cordage out of that yucca and we'll build the rest of the set and then we'll be ready to go so but well, now you can say you saw, saw a turkey too yep so yep oh we saw one on the way in too didn't we oh yeah so yep there's a turkey out in the out in the field as we're driving by we heard a turkey gobble i heard one but it only gobbled one time i don't turn it off <laughs> You hold it down with your thumb, all right, and you gonna take the stone flake, and you're not trying to cut, all you're doing is lightly scraping. Oh. And we're gonna scrape, see what I did? Scrape the cellulose, the green stuff, off of every leaf. And then you do it this side, and then you flip it over, and you do it to the other side. See how the fibers start to separate? And they start cleaning up. See, we don't want to cut the fibers, we just want to scrape them. I'm going to do this one, and then it's going to be your turn. Here's one that's a little bit smaller if you want to try that one. Yeah. That one might be more your speed, huh? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes you just hunt around until you find the tool that, that really works for you, huh? Yeah. Now I grabbed that, and you aren't paying attention, but that's palm fluff. We didn't film that, but we're going to use that as a tinder pile later. I'll set it up here to keep it dry. That's the stuff that we, most of what we could gather up that's we scraped off the yucca and that's something we can set that aside and probably use that as a tinder bottle later but right now it's sopping wet green so if we just keep it in a clump and we can set it up out of the way we might be able to salvage some of that later on in the future okay now what we're going to do is take <clears throat> and we're going to bust this into fibers that are about that big okay so you're just going to pull them apart and start making the stacks. Go ahead and grab, grab a leaf and use your fingernail 
Just grab one leaf at a time. Oh, shoot. Grab one leaf at a time and split it up. And then you want to make sure you're not just laying it helter skelter down into a, into a pile. Make sure it's in a pile that you can grab and pick it up like this in a bundle. Don't overcomplicate it. Look, grab it with your fingernail and just yank that stuff off. You're not going to hurt it. Right in the middle. See where I'm grabbing it? Uh-uh. Pay attention to me. Right in the middle. There you go. I split that down some more. See how much easier that is than trying to peel it from the tip? Mm -hmm. Split it right from the middle. Do I put it in the You can make your own pile. Watch me. I'm going to take a bundle. Oh, about that size. Maybe a little bit bigger. It's about an eighth of an inch. Okay. Okay. And watch me first. And what I'm doing is I'm going to stagger. You see how I don't want them all stopping at the same spot. You see how they all feather out? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to turn it whole over. I want you to pay attention to me first. Oh, okay. Watch me first and then we'll work on yours. Okay. So then we're going to bend it over like that. And then we're going to do a twist overlay. And this is the part I'm going to have to teach you how to do. Okay. And that's where we start like that. And the top bundle you twist overhand away from you and then you bring the whole bundle over and then this is the top bundle and you twist it away from you and then you bring the entire bundle over top of that side and then this one's on top and you twist it away from you mm -hmm. and then all the way over you see what I'm doing okay and see how that makes rope you see that yes. it's pretty cool isn't it yeah okay so let's twist overlay so and the first little bit's the hardest. So now what I want to do is I'm going to get this started. You can try yours in a minute, but I want you to practice on this one. So pinch right here with, with your left hand. There's a mosquito getting me. Nope, with your left hand. Okay. This one, you're going to twist that way away from you. Okay. And then you're going to switch spots. See how that, now this one came on top, but look how I pinch it with this finger. So this one goes in the middle. So I'm going to twist. And when I come under, you see how I grabbed it between this? No, I don't know. My thumb? Okay, yeah, yeah. Index and middle finger, I'm splitting it, so this way when I turn it, it turns the whole bundle. So spin it, and see how my finger's here? Yes. And then I spin it. So now you try that. You gotta hold it up close to here so it doesn't come undone. Mm. Nope, watch again. Spin it away from you. But you see, once you get a good spin on it, it automatically puts your finger right here. See? Mm -hmm. So once you do that, now you take your middle finger and you just clamp it. Okay. And then you keep clamping everything and then turn. Okay. Okay? Mm-hmm. Pinch it. Now pinch it with your fingers. I want you to do it. Okay. Give it. You got to pinch it tight now. And twist and hold on. Okay, see now this? Now, turn the whole thing over. Oh. Just like that. Takes a lot of practice though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you what, why don't you take your bundle? Yep. See, let's get you started. Well, here, take this one. I'll start a new one. Let me get you a little bit more on here. And then I want you, see, I, I, get, I like to get two good twists. I see how I pinch it so it doesn't untwist. Mm -hmm. And then I come in and I fold it over. Now it's just going to take practice and you're going to get frustrated with it for a little bit. But I want you to practice trying to make that. So just you experiment with it and I'll work on making the cord. Because you're probably not going to be able to make this whole cord. But if you get an idea how to make cordage, that's the important part, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, so we set everything out in the sun to, to kind of dry. And one thing I didn't show you is I took a stone flake and I scraped the bark off of this because I really wanted that to dry. So I got two of them here. This one is long and I think it might be good enough to use as a hand drill. So I'm gonna save it for that in case. But I got a good stretch of cordage and we, and we did long amount of cordage because I'll show you why. And got tender bundle sitting here. Just, it's good and dry, ready to go. And then I grabbed a clay pot and I picked the leaves off of the Yopon and I'm just kind of setting them in here to dry. But one thing I remembered, buddy, is we went and cut that stick to make the bow out of. Yeah. Wonder where that stick is now. 
because it didn't make it home. <laughs> no. No. So instead now, what we're going to do is we get to do something cooler. This is, I mean, the stick is the easiest part to get, you know, just a curved stick, not a big deal. So we could just cut another one. I mean, that's not hard to find, but I got something cooler that we can use for the bow of the drill. And it's that. You know what that is? Bison rib? You gotta talk really loud. A bison rib? Yep. That is one of the rib bones out of the bison that I killed with the atlatl. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna make that. So it's kind of kind of fun that we lost the stick. We're gonna use this instead. So I'm gonna show you guys instead of doing just a single wrap on the spindle. What I'm gonna do is wrap this on, and I always give a couple wraps. That's one, one of the reasons, too, that I have lots of extra cordage, because I wanna make sure I have uh, a lot of slack for wrapping and tying. The reason that we're gonna do that is that's one more way, and I'll make sure I put the spindle in the correct way this time, which is that way. If we tie that, that's going to really help keep it from spinning on the on the cordage. Okay. Wrap that under. Wrap it around one more time. Nice easy knot. little off center but we can fix that now that we've got the knot tied we can kind of do what we want with it walk it down to where it's right in the middle that should be perfect and then this one will go that way with and this one will go this way with all right now we're in business so this way when you unwrap one side more called an Egyptian style bow drill and that's really good for plant fiber cords it doesn't put as nearly as much friction on the set okay so now I got my spindle upside down though but that's okay but that's gonna give us uh, what we're really looking for overall so. and we're just gonna see how we drill that with the tip of the stone knife now we're not pushing really hard and twisting because we don't want to slap or snap the blade but what we want to do is just let the drill or let the stone knife working like a drill just start cutting a hole right into that and that's going to give us a good start on our spindle which is here and i'm going to just sharpen the end of it a little bit but see how it's got a pith in the middle but it's kind of soft and spongy looking that's one of the reasons that this ignites so well uh it creates such a nice uh ember is because of that pith but we want to sharpen it down just kind of a little bit. Maybe, huh? I said, once you get the set figured out, that's why you can't rush it. Once you get the set figured out, it's going to operate a lot better. We've got to still have a lot of stretch in this cord. It's going to get better when the cord dries, but if we're in a situation where we need to use this, Yep, you stand back just a little bit. There we go. All right, see how we got it figured out now? Okay, so that's burned in. This cord's all wet, so it's slippery. That's what makes it even tougher, but that's why that knot's gonna help in the middle. And this cord dries out, it's gonna be a lot, lot nicer. Okay, and now we're gonna cut a notch. collect the, the dust and 
I bet you that'll be perfect. And we're going to use this to help catch the coal once we make it. But again, we're probably going to have to practice with this a little bit to get the set to get the set just right. Get it spinning nice. We're going to get that rock really set in there. But that's going to give us a good dry surface because you're still moisture in the ground, you can see. That's going to give us a good dry surface to collect coal. Here, we're getting it now, huh? Right. And this cabbage palm is not the best to use for this. I can promise you that. Oh, and see now, at least we got some dust build up. But this thing started to started to slip because it's stretching so we got to take some of the stretch back out of it quick all right now we're gonna try to get some real heat into this it's smoking it's not squeaking. Nope, it burned all the way through, so that's not good. Burned all the way through it and never created an ember. That's one of the reasons I like a, a much larger spindle. But see how much our cord has been stretching too? So yeah, we burned pretty much all the way through that, I think. Yeah, that's not good, is it? Broke it right off. Well, that's that may not be a bad thing because that spindle had a lot of torque on it. Kind of thought that that might happen. Watch your feet. There we go. Now we got it. Much closer that time. We didn't get a coal, but we got very close. It just gets a little bit better every time because we're stretching this cord and we're getting a little bit closer. So we actually got hotter on that dang side <laughs> than we did on that side, but that's all right. We'll take a quick little break and we'll come back and we'll try it again. Oh, we were so close. This board keeps burning through. All right, so we had to cut a new, we went and just got a stick, a, it's a piece of camphor. That's It's a little bit harder because the other one was just too soft. We were just burning through it about as fast as we were, could spin it. Sometimes you gotta know when to punt and go get a different material. Oh yeah, all right, now we're rolling. 
Hey buddy, grab that camera and just get it up in here close. Quick. How do I do that? Pull it out, just stick it close so you can see. Don't let me hit it with the camera though. We got her now. All we had to do was punt and get a different hearth board and we were fine. So, that being said, I hate that I beat my head against the wall, but I really wanted to use this because we went and collected it. But we just, if you can see, we just kept burning through it. And then the first time with this one, we've got a great coal. Pretty cool, huh, bud? Now we don't have to be in a rush because that's going to burn for a minute. Grab me the end of that if you would, please. Yeah. See, once we sorted it out, it worked all right. Now we're going to go ahead and take our tinder bundle and you're gonna help me with this okay and we're gonna take that coal we're gonna drop it right in there and we don't want to be in a rush what we want to do is be patient and let this build some heat I know a lot of people really rush it along and then end up blowing the coal out so what's the most important thing that you saw out of that experience of watching me fight with this, this hearth board right here? Patience. And if it doesn't work three or four times, what do we do? You get a new material. Yep, because it's not going to work. Alright, I want you to help. You act like you're blowing through a straw and you're going to blow down here. Now you're going like you're like blowing through a straw. So you gotta be able to put air down in there. There you go. Harder. Really push that air. <coughs> Don't breathe the smoke in, you ding bat. <coughs> Here we go. Here we already got it. Oh, it's rolling. Darn it. it built up enough heat, it was it was gonna catch on fire whether you blew on it or not. <laughs> Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that old hearth board and we're going to burn that thing right up because that thing stinks. <laughs> we're save our old one. Fried, it smells like fried pickles. Fried pickles? Yes. I mean that's what it smells like. Right, let's get some other stuff for it here to burn. Alright, well now we know, see? So that other hearth board was too soft, we burned through it. We didn't burn through this side because remember we were, we were spitting in there to keep it from burning. We did burn through it eventually on one side, we had to make a new one. but. Remember the most important part too is this yucca cord is not a permanent solution, okay? This is more of a survival. Now it's going to work for a while longer, but as it dries out more and more and we use it more and more, that yucca cord will break. My best suggestion is to make a cord out of sinew because you can use the same sinew cord for years and years and years and it really works itself into the set really, really well and it pretty much never wears out. So the personal set that I typically use, I use a sinew cord on it, like I use my sinew bowstrings, you know? So sometimes I take an old bowstring or something and I'll turn it into a cord like this. But that shows you, except for the bison rib, which you could pick that up, but any stick will work. But we can go out and collect all this stuff like we did this morning. We went and collected all of this and then we made a fire with it. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? So now what's next on the list is for you to practice with it and for you to get the call. What do you think about that? Now you don't think you can do it? No. no it just takes practice, doesn't it? <laughs> Our leaves are, some are actually starting to turn brown already, drying out. So now what we're going to do is take this clay pot and we're just going to nestle it kind of in here. We're not going to shock it and hit it too fast. Uh, we're just going to let it heat up and we're going to just kind of build fire around. In fact, I'm going to do it on this side and I'm going to go into the fire pit a little bit more. And we're just going to slowly roast those. And once in a while, we'll come along and we'll stir them with a stick. We don't want to burn them, but we want to roast them. All right, so the leaves are actually roasting up pretty good. And I wanted to show Donnie and at least give him some practice. I want him to blow it. Uh, one out of the tinder bundle and then I want him to try to make a coal even though 
he's still pretty young and not uh, not really seasoned at that kind of stuff yet. But this is my normal personal set for fire making. I'm gonna pick one of these that still has enough life in it. And this one has a sinew string, and I've used it in other videos before. And I use a shell as a bearing block. And so overall, it is a much, much nicer set. And so once you have a really nice set built, you hang on to it. But this is why I love the sinew string. Very little friction and it just works. When it starts smoking good like that, you need to back up, but then you need to blow into it more because you're gonna lose it if you don't. Not too hard, not too hard. As soon as it starts rolling smoke, it means it's getting hot and it means you need to blow more. There you go. You're not putting air into it. You're just going. You have to be, you hold it down here, it's getting hot. But hold it down here. It's tough, isn't it? There it is. Okay, it's on fire. Throw it down in there. Not in the stuff. There you go. Perfect. Good job. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? Yeah. Takes practice, huh? Yeah. Alright, well good. At least you at least you got one blown into a flame, huh? Why aren't you leaning on this thing, dude? Come on, figure it out. You figure it out. Figure out how to do it. There you go. See, all I had to do was walk away from you and you had it figured out, huh? Mm -hmm. Good, keep going. See if you get smoke. Nice and easy. Nice, slow and easy. Sorry. Slow and easy. Don't get too excited. And you can push down a little bit harder on the shell. Don't look like I'm making a number. Well, that's because you are not. You don't have enough pressure. You gotta push harder. Tough, isn't it? Yep. All right, our tea is brewing. It's a little bit hot yet. And really, we probably should have done it a better way. It's not super proper, but we just made a tea out of it, kind of a quick one. The best way to do it would have been pick the leaves, probably just dry them out in the sun and get them really dry, then roast them, but do a good roast on it as opposed to uh, just the quick expedient green roast that we did but it still makes the tea and it still kind of works and it's kind of brewing here as we speak i can smell it it actually smells really good i can't i smell smoke you smell smoke yeah <laughs> yep no i can smell it i can smell the clay pot too a clay pot's got a very particular smell there smell i smell pot I think. You I smell know. pot? That's funny. Oh, God. <laughs> <I> <laughs> you smell, smell pot. clay pot. Yeah, that's like... No, you can smell the tea in it, then. It smells pretty good. Yeah. I don't know if it's the tea or the pot. Or the clay pot. Huh? I think it's the clay. I think I got all the leaves. I tried to knock a bunch of the leaves out. Just hold it. Hot? Yeah. You're gonna get a leaf or two, so don't be, don't whine about that. Just tastes like tea. It does, doesn't it? Pretty much just tastes kind of like black tea, is all it really tastes like, but it's got natural caffeine in it. And so we went out today, this morning we went out and we look for materials, right? We found a dog fennel spindle. We found the cabbage palm fireboard, but that didn't work out, that burned through. So we ended up going with a camphor. Um, yeah. We just picked it up here around the house. And we went and cut the yucca with stone knife and we made the cordage, right? Yes. And then we left the stick in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so used the bison rib from my atlatl hunt bison. So that was kind of cool anyway and uh, just made a bearing block out of uh, the cabbage palm as well. And we collected the Yopon holly leaves. And then we came back and we made the fire with a fire kit, we roasted them, and now we get to have the tea. Yeah, it's cooling down. That's pretty good. Want one more? Sure. 
he's not used to having caffeine so he ain't gonna get to have very much of it or he's gonna be absolutely bouncing off the walls <laughs> did you have fun time today what was your favorite part probably going out in the woods and collecting the materials yeah 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 it was kind of once we got back to the house it was getting pretty hot wasn't it yeah it's pretty hot that's like 90 something degrees right now it's pretty warm but we still had fun of it and we got to see the fire get made right you yeah. learned a lot and you saw a deer, hog, turkeys, swallowtail kite, squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty good day. Yeah? Fun time? Yeah. What do you want to do next time? Mm -hmm. Whatever I make you do, huh? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for following along, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the adventure. And hopefully we catch you on the, the next Adventure Friday.